Party Finder was meant to be the single greatest gift to the Wingcraft community. Upon its initial announcement, immediately the community rejoiced. Gone were the days of begging your friends and other people you vaguely knew to party up and help you complete Cluck Cluck. So why did you ask for my help again? Using this powerful tool, you can get instant help with Windcraft's hardest challenges, browse new and captivating guilds to join, or even just chat and hang out with players while you're casually making your way through the game. This wasn't just going to be a small content update with a few patch notes, this new system was going to single-handedly change the way new and old players would approach the game. But instead, we got this. Taco Tuesday, I got the cheese, she tasting the Kool-Aid. We go to plug by the Lupe, she gon' do what the goose like a Brinde. Caliente, she get the bad, but she gotta get it ten ways. Okay, now, I'm gonna lay, I'm lay. I'm gonna the money, mate. We can elevate. elevate. She lay, lay, like she only one way. It's a payday, we should get the comfy. I'ma see the water killer in the pump bay. Trap bean in the toilet, it's like a one way. She gon' perk, but she put off a skirt, perk, perk. Put it work, put your name on the skirt, skirt, skirt. Three diamonds, get the wicked like the perk, perk, perk. The day, put your face on the shirt, shirt. Yeah, the fella do the cases, perk, perk. My name is Jose. No, 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 no. It can't be that bad, right? Oh god, what have I gotten myself into? It was a cool Saturday evening like any other. As I sat slouched at my desk in my lonely throne, I decided to embark on a grand journey with some new contenders. To my surprise, an unpleasant smell invaded my messy room. I shit myself, I thought. Not again. Unfortunately, this time it wasn't the result of a bathroom mishap, it was the stench of the party finder. And party finder I did, baby! With the hunger for chaos and an impulse to solve the greatest mystery known to man, I set sail. The woman, the power, the 200 subscribers, I would truly have it all. Alright, here's how this is gonna work. First, a friend and I are going to check out each section of the party finder. This includes XP parties, content help, and even casual chatting. Then we'll grade each of these based on their effectiveness and efficiency. And last, same goes for raids, but I'm gonna ditch all of my meta DPS mythic builds and put on a new build a friend and I slapped together that costs roughly 8 LA. With this, I'll go through each of the four raids three times and we'll discuss the results at the end. Ladies, gentlemen, take my hand as we embark on our journey. I somehow never hear people talk about the forgery anymore. And even when I did, I never heard literally anyone talk about forgery P Finder. Now, this made me wonder, why does nobody talk about forgery anymore? And to be honest, the only reasonable conclusion to this mystery I could find is... It's because raids have femboys. Wincraft loves femboys. Okay, maybe I'm reaching. Let's go back to talking about forgery. I'm sure you can tell, but I'm not really in tune with the regulars in the forgery community. So maybe there's something I've been missing out on here. And excited to see the outcome, I queued. Oh, dude, there's no way. So, oh no. We got... <laughs> we got two morphs here. What about this dude? He's, he's full fucking morph. Okay. We got a level 93. Okay, we got... <laughs> Come on, guys. We're... we're... <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> dude, I love the party finder. It's so funny. Oh, dear. No, there are no regulars that run for P Finder. These guys are new players who are even more clueless than I am. Two of these dudes were decked in morph. One of them couldn't even wear it and was only leveled enough to do the first few of the dungeons. One of the dudes in the party has clearly never done any dungeons before. I thought it was kind of cute how opportunistic this dude was to try to find weird shortcuts wherever he went no matter how obvious it was. Now, besides chronically waiting for people on parkours, I didn't think the runs were necessarily the most horrible thing, but I would absolutely be lying if I said I wasn't carrying the entire time. These guys had no idea what they were doing, and clearly just queued forgery and P-Finder to see what it was. If I were to rate 
this, it's a pretty easy F. F to pay respects because it's flying straight into the trash. In theory, it sounds like a cool idea, but in reality, it doesn't work at all. Why would you make it so people can queue if they can't even run half of the dungeons? Isn't the main point of forgery to run all of the corrupted dungeons for a chance to get a mythic at the end? If you need forger for leveling, you can get much better results by telling people you're spamming specific dungeons for a certain level range on Pfinder. And speaking of leveling, I have a mage slot that really needs to level up. I wonder if I can get any help on Pfinder. This is called a transition. Here's the plan. Tarpe and I are going to try three of these XP parties in Pfinder to see if they're actually viable for leveling up. These three parties will be Herb Cave, Waterfall, and Scrapyard. Starting with Herb Cave because it's the lowest level out of the three. Oh, leveling in Herb Cave and Totems and more. Join. Oh yeah, it's level 45 and it has more people. We're joining that one. This party? What? Is this party dead? Oh shit, it might be. Did someone new just join? Yeah, they should really kick the people who left. What's up, gang? Hi, Totems. We're okay, actually. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay, actually. It dies. I lost so much shit, what the fuck? Herb Cave didn't go too well. We knew there was a realistic chance this would happen. Sometimes party leaders go AFK and leave their party up on Pfinder, so sometimes things are really disorganized and don't work. Later, we actually came back and decided to give Herb Cave another chance, which actually didn't go too well again in the start until we got more healers in the party. This isn't going very well at all, actually. No nobody's going down. I don't know how I feel about this. This isn't crazy. Orb cave. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, it simply wasn't worth the hassle. If I were to try again, I would rather go hit up flesh cave than try getting lucky with parties with good healing. Next was waterfall. Waterfall ultimately suffers from the same issues. If you don't have a decent healer, you might as well give up. Though I'd actually consider sifting through the Pfinder for good waterfall parties because the EXP is actually pretty worth it unlike Herb Cave. Flush Cave still works for the level, but Waterfall's XP gain is simply unmatched for what it is. Again, it wasn't bad, but I did have Tarpe switch to healer so we could properly farm it. Now we have Scrapyard. Now I'm not super sure what to say. I mean, most people know Scrapyard works great. Since it's so popular, parties pop up quick and are easy to sift through for good healers. Overall, super good. I don't think this needs more elaboration. Now, if we're rating EXP parties as a whole, I'm definitely slapping this in B. Scrapyard definitely carries. I think most people have used Scrapyard at some point, which makes it a massive staple in the Pfinder scene. But EXP parties fall flat on most other fronts. Other spots are decent with healing, especially Waterfall, but sifting through grind parties is pretty painful. I see social parties on Pfinder pretty damn often, though I've never personally joined one outside of making this video. I wasn't really sure what to expect or even how to weigh it when ranking it, but I decided to give it a shot anyways. Alright, for A and M social, what does this mean? What is A and M? Alright, this is like a brand new Pfinder by the way. Like, he just put this up. Alright, well... That is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Hi! It's great! How's yours? You're like such a child right now. Been doing good. Happy to be able to relax by playing this. <laughs> Are you guys doing quests right now? How do I... How do we respond? Uh... I am Gelly Board. <laughs> I don't know. What am I, I doing? I am Gelly Board. <laughs> Not at the moment. Is that a quest? <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, bro. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> I love you. I left. I left. Yeah, alright, I'll slap that in the video. That's fine. No, there's like no there's like nothing to get from that. Not really sure what I expected. You join the party, sometimes people talk, sometimes they don't. You're not losing anything by drawing. A tier. Quests can be a bit difficult. Some are a lot harder than others, while some even require assistance from other players. The party finder fits this problem perfectly. This brings together all of the players who are stuck in the same quest so they can all complete it together. It's a win-win situation. You know, kind of like watching Femboys get banned. I 
wanted to try this out myself. So we decided to do the triple question mark quest, which requires three players to collect three different meteors and solve a puzzle which requires organizing four players to stand on various pressure plates in a specific order to open a secret room. This is where the P-Finder would shine. Our plan was flawless. The Windcraft community takes quests very seriously. So all we'd have to do is list the party on the party finder and get our party of four, but the impossible happened. Bro. Uh, what did you do? <laughs> Bro. We got bored and gave up. So once again, we devised the plan. Hear me out. Bob's Lost Soul, an incredibly popular quest that I see countless players talking about in the game. This was the perfect chance. People need help on this frequently, especially when it comes to obtaining the depressing weapons needed to pass through the quest. The plan, it was truly flawless this time. The redemption of the party finder was upon us. All I had to do was... Almost done. Raids, these are pretty important. Given you important loot like mastery tomes, exclusive gear, Ellie, and more, you can't go through Windcraft without trying them. Good parties are an absolute must if you want the best gear since challenges are team based. So what's a better judge than trying all four raids with a build that only costs eight Ellie? Tarpe helped me put this build together and if you want more info on that, check the description, I'll have more details there. Starting with the lowest level, I decided to do Nest of the Groot Slangs. Most endgame players don't this raid at all. It's mainly lower levels progressing through the game who are looking to give it a shot. The great thing about this raid is that the queue for it normally doesn't take as long to find a party. And since it's a lower level raid, it's much easier. On the other hand, people who queue this have no idea what they're doing most of the time. So there's a good chance you're gonna have to carry while your other two party members mope around and ask 10 billion questions. For my first run through this, I fan two of the cutest fuckers running this thing. <laughs> oh, we got the whole gang up here. That's great. <laughs> I love this kind of thing. Past all the horrible P Finder players, you start to reach a level of irony where you can just laugh at how absurd things are. You know, like a blind dog. But beyond the level of irony, I actually discovered a fourth zone. TNA Wallers. No, but overall, all three runs were relatively clean. Though, I did have to solo the entire collection room. Wait, did... I think I... I think I did every single one of them. That's funny. But like, dude, they're level 60, who cares? Plus if you're running a level 60 raid, it's either because you just unlocked it and need to unlock the tome slot or you're bored. Now I promise, I don't think you'd care anyways. All right, so for raiding the P-Finder for it, I'd say C tier. It's about half and half between endgame players and new players. Still, though, I wouldn't trust any of them. Even this max dude died for some reason in my second run. Still has fast queue times though, and nobody's very stingy over Azrun's. However, the Nexus of Light raid is just what the doctor ordered. Except I'm not a doctor and I didn't fucking order it. This raid is a complete disaster. I don't really have much experience with this raid and it's the worst possible matchup for this archer build. Arrow Bomb is your strongest AoE attack and that's not saying much compared to the likes of Shaman or Warrior. For this raid, you would need to depend on your teammates. If they're not attentive enough, it's game over, especially if you get crystallized during the boss fight. The buffs in this raid are some of the best though. There's some great damage buffs as well as good defense buffs and I even found myself able to obtain 100k EHP in one of my runs. But still, without a decent party, I couldn't carry the boss fight due to all the mobs. The thing I want to focus on though is my last run. My party was pretty average, no one seemed very experienced, but I actually managed to grab an agility buff in the first room. This would buff my EHP from 14k to 21k. Not bad, and it's the best first buff I could possibly ask for. However, I wasn't as lucky in my second room. Um... Uh, this isn't good. They were all damage buffs. The last thing I could hope for was a good buff in the next room, or it would be over. Wait, 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 Um, this is the play. This is 100% the play. Um, it's... Oh, I thought it would... Why does it say 70 if it's only gonna give me 40? The buff was labeled to give 70 points to each stat, but instead I was given 40. 
Well, this isn't bad. I really needed the 80 defense from the other buff since defense is my lowest stat. I had 39k EHP. Well, not the worst. You need to remember I died with over 100k EHP and I still have no idea how to run this raid. All I could do is just make sure I wouldn't get swarmed by mobs. <laughs> Focus on the mobs real quick. I don't know why, but we actually have a real shot at success this time. We did it! 35k EHP. Oh my god. No, I figured it out. No way. <laughs> Dude, I always died in here before. Oops. Yeah, I finally figured it out. I actually managed to carry the fight too, since I made sure to only attack the boss when the other threats were eliminated. I still would recommend a class with more AoE though, but it's pretty doable as long as you consistently clear the mobs. Now, instead of raiding this, I'm going to give a list of things I would rather do instead of this raid. Stub my toe, shit myself in public, drink hydrofluoric acid, Xanax, sniff a fursuit, walk in on my parents, become British, literally kill myself. D tier. The Kenyan Colossus is a name they used to call me in high school, but it's also the name of this raid. This raid is very heavy on mobs, so again, not the best matchup. Luckily, I actually do have some experience with this one, and you're also more likely to find seasoned players playing this raid. So overall, this will at least fare better than Nexus of Light. Again, lacking AoE hurts, especially if you get the two plat in the third room. Otherwise, it does alright. The P Finder, you better pray you find people who can reach it. Otherwise, the maze room will be a problem. And for the boss fight, if you don't know the attack patterns, it can be pretty brutal. And it's not uncommon for players to die here. The one thing I noticed from these runs is that these players are way more well versed in this raid. I swear, someone's handing Tren and Adderall to all of the morphs in Pfinder. Oh wait, that's just called the loot running update. Nah, okay, that's fine. My first two runs were clean. Even though I died on my first run, my party carried just fine like nothing happened. However, on my third run, we weren't so lucky. The two plat room is an absolute party killer sometimes. If there's not enough damage, sustain, or AoE, things can get pretty messy. Two people died pretty early into the room, and even trying to clutch up, everybody but me ended up dying. All things considered though, the runs could have been worse. If I were to rate this, it's going B tier. This raid has the most formidable P Finder players so far that know what they're doing out of the three. But the thing that stops it from going any higher is the queue times. They don't take as long as Nexus of Light, but it's long enough for me to wonder if the Colossus does yoga because I feel like it's stretching the queue as long as it fucking can. The Nameless Anomaly is a raid that's notorious for its extreme difficulty, but that's not with that reward. If you can manage to tame this absolute beast, you're set. All you have to do is beat a boss with a whopping 22 million health, dodge its watch phase, and a plethora of other leaps and attacks, and the reward is yours. Yeah, it's super easy, just like fixing Windcraft's mythic economy. My first raid was pretty wild, actually. Basically, if you bring the most runes to a raid, there's a strong chance you will become the party leader. A lot of players hate being the party leader, leaders, so some opt to not bring any runes at all and instead pay an EB. Some people despise this and actively kick people out of the party for it, or just flame each other and chat over it. Now, I'm sure you can guess what happened. Non-stop, five minutes straight, these two were eating each other alive over this stupid toll room. This guy wanted 13 EB for it, but the guy only paid 12. He kept demanding the extra EB and the other guy kept refusing. I wasn't even mad to be honest. Once you see the dude whip out some fucked logic like, oh, but they're expensive. Expensive. Yeah, you know you're in for a good night. <laughs> The party was fine otherwise, but when we got to the boss fight, I got absolutely reality checked. From 10 million health, my whole party was dead. I had to solo the boss all the way down to zero. And I'll tell you, this build works great. For how versatile this build is, I'm shocked you can squeeze this much in with 8 LE. <laughs> Besides this though, my other runs were pretty flawless. And even during boss fights, we... <sighs> Damn it!
damn it! For being the hardest content in the game, the P-Finder does its job. I'm not gonna lie, people still die pretty often since, you know, it's the hardest rate. But for what it's worth, players come in with a plan and know how the rooms work 9 times out of 10. And that's significantly more credit than I can give Nexus of Light or Ness of the Groot Slings. Not only that, but the queue times are the fastest in P-Finder with an average of 1 to 3 minutes. B tier. Now, we have the P-Finder itself. Overall, I think it's a solid system, but it needs a lot of tweaking. However, I think it still adds a lot to the game and does a lot for the community. And for that reason, I think this deserves no less than B tier. Do people over exaggerate how awful P Finder is? Yeah, probably. Does P Finder have some awful players? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. But you need to remind yourself, a lot of these players are learning, and after some time, they might become good players too. Or, uh, maybe they won't. Some players are just born the wall. Um, subscribe! Yeah, it, that's my channel. I know, there's like, so many videos on it. Comments! I read those. Maybe you got some video ideas. Give me ideas, I like ideas. Please, help, I'm, I'm running out of ideas.